Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. There will be a basketball game in Phoenix, and that Phoenix Suns team is going to be facing our Los Angeles Lakers, 3-0 Los Angeles Lakers, Western Conference leading Los Angeles Lakers, three-way tie for the best record in the league, Los Angeles Lakers. Let's put that out there right now. Uh, I'm fresh off homework on the Phoenix Suns' last basketball game against the Dallas Mavericks, and I'm jumping straight in. One of the things that the Dallas Mavericks – were able to do against the Phoenix Suns. We get a lot of offensive rebounds. Jay Afford had four of them. Lively had four of them. Someone else had three. But the Phoenix Suns were still able to win the basketball game despite that process going as it did and them shooting like 13 fewer field goals. And the way they did it was by getting to the line and allowing their three-point volume to be a bit higher than the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, they shot 39 threes, hit 14 of them. So... And getting to the line like 38 for 38 points uh, attempted. I think they hit like 26 of them or something like that. So that's kind of how they were able to beat the Dallas Mavericks by like 13 points, despite Dallas having so many more opportunities. Um, so that's something to think about because we're a good offensive rebounding team. That's the way we can attack them. We just have to not foul them. Uh, so the injury report is the next thing that comes to mind. We still have three guys missing Ga um, uh, Coloco. Wood and of course Vanderbilt are out. We sent a bunch of dudes to the G League. Everybody but Bronny James basically is sent to the G League from the back of the bench. Um, so you know we're gonna be a little short-handed. Probably gonna have to play um, Cam Reddish a little bit tonight, and, and, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, but we got a thin bench. I expect that our our minutes toward Dalton Connect is gonna go up. He was not sent to the G League as I was expect he would not be. Um, if anything, he needs to be a part of what we're doing even more so. So we're excited about him. I personally think the Los Angeles Lakers probably should bring uh, uh, Marmel Torre back for this road trip. Uh, Jalen Husafino is going to be over at the G League. That's fine. Um, of course, sending uh, Quincy Oliveri to the G League based on our needs as a roster not something i'm too worried about although i think he's one of the better guys that we would rather have in regular rotation as well but i think Torre, for the sake of having center depth probably would be a good idea not to leave him in the g league for the whole duration of the road trip the other guys yeah him no um i just think we're a little too reliant upon jackson hayes off the bench to play the center position and while i have no problem with how jackson's been playing you always want to leave room for him to roll an ankle and then suddenly you're playing anthony davis 50 minutes if it goes in overtime or you're asking people who are out of that position to play it and then you're going small it's just a little dangerous for my liking right now i'm not in love with uh not having any center depth especially since we're still out wood and coloco so if if the lakers are listening to me i think it makes a lot of sense to let Torre stay for the road trip until we get christian wood or somebody back and then send him there that's what I think we actually should be doing from a strategic standpoint. I have no problem with Jalen Husafino going to the to the G League, though. Uh, he needs to stay down there for a little while. Um, what's the other guy? Max Lewis. He definitely needs some G League minutes right now, so we're, I'm glad he's down there. And, of course, Bronny James, for political reasons, we're not sending Bronny down there until after the road trip so we can get him that moment in Cleveland with his dad, um, which is fine. I mean, look, man. That's just part of the game. You know, we know we didn't put him on this team uh, to play all season long this season, but we did give him a four-year deal, and a lot of what has to do with this situation is beyond us. It's more so about the money-making opportunities. So Cleveland, Braun, obviously his son needs to play in the Cleveland game. Do I prefer we do things that way? No, I hate the business of basketball. I actually hate this a lot. But at the end of the day, uh, this is what people are doing, so we just got to watch them do it and, and be patient um, with the process. But me personally, I think Bronny James should have started the league the season in the G League and should be playing big G League minutes uh, every single game. That's what I think should be happening. But um, it is what it is, man. Bronny's going to come with us on the road trip. And, uh, you know, it, it, that's, that's going to be cool. So it is what it is, man. We will uh, go forward. With the Phoenix Suns to start this road trip, I think it's a five or six game road trip. I believe it's five games uh, with the likes of the Cleveland Cavaliers, of course, the Philadelphia 76ers, the, Men the Memphis Grizzlies, um, Toronto Raptors. And I think that might be it. I think that's the end of the road trip. Maybe it's a five game road trip. 
somewhere in there i jumbled up the uh the the, the order though but we're seeing the phoenix suns tonight to start that process and uh you know we've been kicking tail at home obviously we beat the minnesota timberwolves we beat the phoenix suns so we just seen like a million times in a row and um you know we're coming off a fantastic win against the sacramento kings where we had a 44 point fourth quarter uh took some real good defense uh to the chin they were playing great d against us had a good fourth quarter run against us erased two 14 or 15 point leads um, and we still were able to find a way to win. And that's really what it's about. In the Minnesota game, we could barely hit a three-point shot, still find a way to win. In the Phoenix Suns game, two games ago, we were down by 22 points. They came out, scored ridiculously in the first quarter, couldn't miss at all, and we still found a way to win. And so that's been the story. The Lakers find a way to win. The Lakers take care of their principles, rebound the ball, and find a way to win. So the Phoenix Suns have been um, – taking some tough losses to the Los Angeles Lakers. The first game in the preseason, they did win the game, but even then it didn't feel like they won because AD and Braun annihilated them in the first half. We put our hopefuls on the floor in the second half and they ran away with the game per what we would expect. But we knew that we dominated them and if we would have played 48 minutes, we would have dominated them further. The next time we saw them, that was the Dalton Connect game. He went off for 35 points, came roaring back in the fourth quarter, stole the game away from the Phoenix Suns on their home floor. And in the following game, they were up by 22 when we came roaring back, as we just talked about a couple seconds ago. So now we see the Phoenix Suns again for the fourth time in a matter of like three weeks, knowing that we've pretty much dominated them the whole time. This mirrors what it was last season as well. We kind of had a similar schedule, kind of had a similar result at the start of the season but then played them later on in the season well down the road and got beat two times by them. So, you know, I don't know if this is going to be the same type of deal, but I like the idea of us dominating somebody early because Lord knows we've been dominated by teams in the past, especially when Darwin was running stuff. So this is a game where I think we're going to get an even tougher intensity than we've seen in all three of the games we just saw because this is a team you keep on beating and this is a team that has a lot of pride this is a team with three hall of famers and bradley beal kevin durant and of course devin booker and they're not going to let you just continue to steamroll them like this you have to take this game just like i said about the last one at halftime it's going to require us to pull our shoulder out of our socket to win this particular game in my opinion i think phoenix is going to come in with a hellacious playoff like intensity and they know that they were able to run up a 22 point lead they know that that Dalton connect game if he didn't do that they win you know what i mean they know that they did beat us in the first preseason game so they can't keep believing that they are just not able to defend themselves against us that every game they've played in has shown them they can it's sort of like us against the denver nuggets yeah we found a way to get leads but we still give it back we couldn't overcome that understanding of how that kept happening. But in all the games, we damn near led in all of them. This is the kind of perspective the Phoenix is going into this game with, and I know that. And so we have to be on guard. Um, it's why I'm a little concerned about us shrinking our bench a little bit. Even though some, a lot of them dudes, I agree, they need to be in the G League. I just don't know if you want to be down bodies going up against a team like this who can be physical at times, things like that. Um, this is an important basketball game because you want to get a stranglehold on this on this series. Um, obviously, uh, and seeing this team, you want to keep the middle edge just in case you have to draw them in the playoffs. You want them thinking about how they can't beat you. And so I think this game should be uh, us on the offensive rather than uh, fending off what I expect will be an onslaught. We should come in with an onslaught mindset as to keep our foot on the necks of the enemy, pretty much. And that's exactly who Phoenix is. Kevin Durant is on a tear, man. Not too many people are talking about him, but he's been scoring like crazy. He had 31 in the last one uh, against the Clippers. I don't remember exactly what he had, but it was up in the air in the 30s. He, like Anthony Davis, has been scoring like crazy. So we need to keep an eye on Kevin Durant. Wasn't his most efficient game in the last one. I think he only had 10 field goals and maybe a 21 attempts, something like that. But he's still getting his numbers. So we need to understand that Kevin Durant is playing good ball right now. Keep an eye on him. Obviously, Devin Booker, nobody has an answer for him pretty much anywhere. This is somebody who scored 73 points in one basketball game once and came back and scored 70 in another game several years down the road, if I'm not mistaken. Devin Booker is one of the most pure scorers the game has ever seen and probably an underrated player when considering that truth. Um, but at the end of the day, he hasn't been able to beat the Lakers very much this season already, and I know he's tired of that, so I expect for him to come out 
with a hellacious intensity. And it's going to require guys like Austin Reeves to match that. Um, and not not just get cooked, but do some cooking as well. He plays some pretty good defense, too. Also underrated on that side of the ball, in my opinion, is Devin Booker. Um, Bradley Beal is a game-time decision. I think they're probably being just cautious with him, to be honest with you. He really is in great shape. I don't know if he rolled an ankle in the last game, but I don't think he even played in the Dallas game. So that tells me he probably will be playing in this one. I just think they're being cautious, but I haven't. I don't know exactly what's going on there. Um, but he looked great. Every time we've seen him this season so far, all three of the games, he looked fantastic. So I do expect he's going to want to come out and, and, and continue to try to chip away to finally get themselves a real victory against the Lakers. So, you know, like I said, we need to be aggressive. We need to come out. We know who we are at this point. Offensive rebounds, take care of the basketball, even though we've been turning it over a little more than we like to, especially in that Sacramento game where we had 19 turnovers, way out of bounds for who we've become. Uh, but we know what we want to do. Uh, we've been shooting a very good percentage from behind the arc, even though the volume has been a little lower than, lower than we anticipated it would be. Um, I, I think it's been for our, our betterment because we've been able to attack and get to the line and, and, and score in the paint, and that's who we are. So these things are all right. Um, what else are things? Uh, we are not a good transition defensive team, and we give up a lot of fast break points. In fact, we're one of the worst teams in the league through three, three games in that regard. I think a lot of that has to do with us crashing the offensive glass, and I think it's a good thing to give up um, if it's going to give us second chance points. We did the opposite with Darvin Ham, and we saw we weren't that great of a basketball team. So with the personnel that we have, I think the approach to crash the glass and maybe punt transition defense probably is a better approach just based on what our capability is rebounding the ball. Guys like Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves, uh, Max Christie, obviously AD and Braun, they're crashing the glass really well with their minutes. We need that to continue. Dalton Connect showing he can re offensive rebound, etc. We do have a good uh, rebounding team right now so you know that's what I think will continue but this is a team that can definitely definitely get into open court one player I want to circle with the Phoenix Suns is not a player that I talk about a lot with their team but he has been getting more minutes than I maybe expected and that's Monte Morris uh, just been seeing him all over the highlights every time I watch any highlights of the Phoenix Suns he seems to be getting a lot of minutes um, you know, I call him a 5-5-5 five, five, five guy. Five rebounds, five points, five assists is kind of what you can expect from him a lot of times, somewhere in that ballpark. But he really does make an impact with the minutes given, and they are leaning on him quite a bit. Tyus Jones as well, another guy uh, who doesn't turn the ball over very much, can shoot the ball pretty well, plays some solid defense for the most part, a little smaller guy, but he is a high-level protector of the basketball. He does not turn it over one of the best in basketball in that regard. And he complements um, the, the three starting uh, sh scores uh, very well, just like Monte Duke does. So I think when you consider the type of point guards they have next to Booker, KD, and uh, Beal, I think they complement them well because they're not taking any shots away from them, but they're also very steady reliable role-playing point guards. So I think that's a good way to construct things. Ryan Dunn's been shooting the three. It's not a fluke. He's continuing to shoot well, and it's starting to get ridiculous, really. Um, he hit about three of them in the last game against the Dallas Mavericks. We've got to keep an eye on, keep a hand up. I don't know who he's been working with. This was supposed to be a deficiency in his game coming out of college. He's, uh, he's, he's touted as one of the best defensive prospects we've seen. This is someone that I've heard many prospects, uh, many uh, analysts say that he is one of the best defensive prospects they've seen in years. But he can't score. Well, now he's coming out and he's turning into a three-point sniper. So that tells me that he is somebody that they're going to keep in regular rotation is going to have a massive impact on their team going forward. I expect Ryan Dunn, if he stays on this path, to be one of the rookies uh, in the Rookie of the Year candidates candidacy. He is going to be a high-level rookie. So just keep an eye open for him. Also, Igadaro as well. Kind of been hot and cold in the stats, but does have some, a big impact ability. Uh, rebounding, scoring the ball specifically. Um, I expect for him to continue to be a bit of a headache to deal with as well. Uh, Yusef Nurkic is coming off a 14 rebound game. So if anybody's going to try to keep us from getting all the boards that we're used to, it's Nurkic. And last year he did push AD around quite a bit. So we just need to be ready for Nurkic. He's kind of in a good rhythm for himself right now after missing a good portion of the preseason. So uh, we know Nurkic. We just saw him a, a couple of days ago. I expect for him to come out and to have this game circled as, as one to to play well and so uh if anybody's gonna get in the way of what we're doing it's probably gonna be him and his big size so 
that's somebody to circle. Uh, Josh Okogie is expected to still be out. I think I already mentioned that. But if he does play, he tends to play well against the Lakers. So keep an eye open if for some reason he gets uh, cleared for this game. But I don't believe he will be. So that's something to think about. Um, and so on and so forth. You know, at the end of the day, the Phoenix Suns are a team that's moving forward as one of the better scoring teams on paper. Uh, you got to consider a guy like Grayson Allen who can shoot the three very well. I think he started the season a little hobbled, but he's not on the injury report tonight, so you're going to have to deal with him. And he's more than capable if you leave him open, hitting four and five threes if you leave him open. It's not good. So that's what I know about Grayson Allen. He tends to play some tough defense as well. Uh, it's kind of overcome, overcome some of his um, – or his reputation of being a dirty player who likes to hurt people. He's he's grown up out of that. I think he went and got himself some help for that personally. I was on his case about it, but he, he hasn't shown any propensity to do that. But as long as he's on the floor, I always wonder if he's gonna do something dirty. It's just a it's just something that's on always in the back of my mind. But at the end of the day, he hasn't shown any of that in a while and he's been a exemplary teammate for the Phoenix Suns and I think uh going forward he's gonna be somebody that's gonna be one of the most important players on their team off of the bench or starting depending on how they want to rotate things so um yeah always keep an eye open for grayson allen and uh bowl bowl they tend to not give him the minutes that i think he should get consistent minutes i know he's still a developing player i know there's some motor issues and stuff like that but when you got a guy who's seven three with like a nine foot wingspan who could dribble the ball like a guard you just got to continue to work with him they do have a lot of options uh, but if Bo Bowl's on the floor, he creates a lot of problems. So keep an eye open for Bo Bowl. I'm just not really ever sure what we're going to get from him, um, just based on the inconsistency of, of what they do. One thing I want to point out about the Phoenix Suns that the eye test has told me is that Budenholzer's offense is really fun to watch with those three stars that they have out there. They pass the ball a lot, and they do it well, and they do it crisp. Uh, so, you know, that's something we've seen a lot of, obviously seeing them three times this year. But that's something that I just wanted to point out. It has been pretty to watch them score the ball, uh, working with one another and getting assists off back and forth. So keep keep a, keep a steady eye on, on the ball movement, player movement on both sides, because I think it could be something fun to watch. Um, so, yeah, this is this is a good game ahead, man. One player I want to talk about on our side is Rui Hachimura, because Rui Hachimura, uh, for the first time in a long time, is fantasy relevant, meaning if he's on your fantasy Raver wire you probably need to be picking him up right now i picked him up on a bunch of teams and a bunch of leagues and uh am confident that he's going to be able to continue doing what he's doing and the reason why he's become more relevant is because of the uptick in rebounding now that he wants to average about seven eight rebounds a game his 18.17 points looks more fruitful and he can do some things defensively here and there as well we would like for him to pass the ball uh, a bit more i know that brian got on his case in the last one i saw an excerpt from that brian threw some MFs out there and told him to pass the rock. Um, yeah, I guess he had forced a, a, a jumper, missed it when Braun was in the midst of his heater in the fourth quarter, stringing off like 16 straight points to start the fourth quarter, which we will literally never forget. But I guess Rui got in the way of that and thought he was going to try to get his. Just especially after the fact that I had pointed out how unselfish he looked in the prior game, I thought he took some steps back with that being the case. But all in all, Rui Hachimura, has become a bit better of a playmaker we just need to continue to work off the old habits of forcing shots for himself that selfishness stuff does not work especially on a team with lebron james when he's hot Rui. but nevertheless um we've been pleased with Rui Hachimura. he's been looking great out there he's continuing to 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 push the the the, the envelope in regards to uh using his strength i think he's been more explosive this year which is something that uh, I wanted to see. We were talking about how we wanted to replace him with somebody more explosive, but he's taken on that role, and I like what I've seen. Uh, so he just looks like he's in much better shape this year. He's healthy, and I, I like the new improved Rui. Uh, he's continuing to show us that he can do things on the weak side help side of the game. Blocking shots uh, as a weak side defender is something that is very, very underrated in regards to him. I call him weak side Rui because of it, but he can tend to get one of those a game. So we need to keep an eye open for him on the blocks category as well, as I think that will only improve from here. So I've been happy with Rui, man, and I wanted to point him out, uh, pick him up on the waiver wire. Also, Austin Reeves really, really solidified himself as a probably number three option for our team. Uh, 
He had turned the ball over a bit more than we need him to in the last one with about six turnovers. But his three ball is starting to come around, which is very important. And he's still being as aggressive as he always is, throwing his body around, drawing fouls, flopping, uh, doing whatever he needs to do to put himself in a position to help the team. Uh, offensive rebounds is something that he also does very well, rebounding in general. And we really like what he brings to the table when the three ball is falling, especially the play making has been superb, all of that. We've loved it. So just want to encourage Austin Reeves to continue do that, doing that and kind of cut back on them long three point shots uh, because they just haven't been falling. They could be fun to look at when they do, but he hasn't been able to hit them consistently start the season, needing him last year consistently either. So take a couple steps in. Maybe a few step back threes, but the ones from way far away, maybe cut back on those until they can start falling again in practice. But uh, yeah, man, these are the things that come to mind. Obviously, we want to uptick Dalton Connect's usage. I just think we're bringing him along slowly. I think it's a good strategy for rookies. I think a lot of rookies are going through that right now in the league. Certain guys you would expect are just better than some of the players they're playing against, but you but coaches want them to earn those minutes. So I'm not mad at JJ for, for using that, but Dalton's a bit older, you know, that's the thing about Dalton. He's already 23 years old, so we don't have to really treat him like a rookie as it pertains to the mental uh, stuff that we're making him earn. It's more so about just making him comfortable and getting his, uh, you know, getting running the, 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 the place for him to allow him to be featured um, because I think he ultimately is somebody who's ready to be featured. I really do believe that, and I think most of Laker Nation is already calling for him to be utilized more so, you know, Conditioning is a real thing, and your body's not used to playing 82 games. You don't want to come out and, and be asked to play 30 minutes a night in the first season. It's just you're asking for for the rookie wall to hit or injuries to hit. And I think J.J.'s more than aware of that, so I trust J.J.'s uh, decision-making in regards to Dalton Connect. But at the end of the day, we do want him to have a bigger role. And uh, I think we'll be a much better team if he does. So expect those minutes to continue to increase, and I expect for him to continue to play well when he does. Uh, so that's what I want to say there. Hopefully we can get a good Max Christie game. Haven't been loving what I'm seeing from Max Christie. Starting to get some. He's getting some of the D-low treatment where people are starting to murmur about trading him and stuff like that. You know how fickle Laker fans are. If we don't like what we see in a moment's notice, we will turn on you. It's just is what it is. But with Max Christie, you know, the story on this channel has always been the same. I've been screaming this before the season started. Max was not developed properly. It's one of the biggest failures of our franchise this year. Uh, going into this year is how we're asking this dude after paying this dude to play a bigger role when we didn't give him the minutes to do so. So it's, it's a big pet peeve of me for me seeing Max Christie struggle, but not because I'm frustrated with him, but because I'm frustrated with the Lake organization uh, and, and particularly our coaching staff from last year uh, in, in not being willing to put him out there uh, consistently so that he can develop. I thought that was one of the most important things for our franchise, and it was tone deaf. Of, of, of Darvin Ham to not see that as a as a very important goal of our franchise. So glad Darvin is gone. Glad JJ is in. He's given Max these opportunities, but Max is showing that he's basically where we were last year at the start of the season. And we're just we're just a year behind his development. So it just is what it is. I have no interest in trading Max Christie at all. I think he's one of our best on ball defenders, also one of our best rebounders at his position. So uh, I think that we just have to work through some of that stuff and, and you know, just just understand that we're on, a, we're on a learning curve and it's not his fault. It ain't. So Max Christie will put it together. But I really do want to say, and I keep saying this, and hopefully somebody hears me, he's going to have to go through some passing drills, man. Y'all got to run him through passing drills. He's not going to be the best player you want him to be until you zero in on his very specific weakness, and that is passing when to pass and that he's accurate when doing so if y'all not working with him in that area you're gonna always have trouble with max christie he's got his game down packed in other areas he could use a lot of shots up though he's a he's a shooter that hasn't been able to hit you consistent shots i think that's something he needs to be doing a lot but for him he needs specific focus on his weaknesses because his strengths are going to shine but his weaknesses are going to glare and that's just what it is uh, also something else i think Bronny james needs to be taking a lot of shots and one thing that's consistent about Bronny James is that he cannot shoot worth a damn. The thing about it is, I think the form is fine. And I accused him of being a better shooter than his dad well before he got into the league. So it's not that he can't shoot. He just needs the reps on this level. He needs to shoot. 
Bronny needs to shoot, Max needs to pass. If we're not running those type of drills for those particular players, we're not developing them the way I think we should. So I just want to put that out there. Those are severe weaknesses, and we can zero in on them and run drills for that in practice and beyond. Those guys are going to put in their own work as well. So you know, these are things that we're thinking about, man. Uh, hopefully, just moving on from those guys, uh, we can uh, see more of the same from Jackson Hayes, he's been really utilizing his minutes very well off the bench, providing explosiveness, dunking the ball, rebounding well, consistently. And I really like what I've seen from him. The issue with him last year was not being able to stay out of foul trouble. He's done a great job of doing that this year. Keep it up. I think the work that he's putting in is working out, and we really like him as a lob threat. He seems to have good synergy with D'Lo. D'Lo is often looking to find him. I think they get along very well on the court. So we need to continue to find ways of putting both of those players on the floor at the same time as much as possible to run plays for one another. They like running together. I think that D'Lo's obviously been a struggling player. Jack Jackson Hayes is, is known to struggle in our uniform. Let's see if we can continue to experiment with getting them opportunities to run plays for one another on the offensive end. It looks pretty good. So that's what I want to say, man. Looking for different pieces that look like they play well with one another. AD and Austin seem to be in a good rhythm with one another as well. So we want to continue to see them on the floor together. They they look great together as well. So these are things we're going to continue looking for. Pairings, trios, who looks great with who. Uh, so, yeah, man, this has been a lot of fun, though, man. When your team is winning, it's not a whole lot to complain about. Obviously, we've had some some glaring weaknesses that we need to work on shooting in the first game against minnesota um you know le big leads getting spread out somehow having to withstand the max christie minutes as i complained about in the last game we put him on the floor and went down by a lot these are things that are you know to be pointed out obviously the turnovers in the last game we just want to make sure that we take care of what we got to take care of and uh continue to to see room for improvement as we are finding success early uh, don't be fooled by that success. You could very easily go on a three-game losing streak just the same. This is not us being the best team in the world. This is just us getting out to a great start. So we need to know the difference, you know, and, and, and not buy the hype as a means of sighing and relieving ourselves and then getting mowed down by a couple teams that can make it sway back to us thinking we suck again. This thing is very, very sensitive in regards to that because we do have a limited roster, and we are heavily relying upon AD scoring a lot um, and playing a lot in order for us to be successful. So while he's playing like this, we can beat everybody. If he sits down and can't, doesn't play, we might not beat anybody. So that's just the reality of it. When that's the dynamic, you don't buy the hype. Uh, you just can keep continue to focus. And give credit to AD where it's due. He's averaging, what, 33 points a game. He's your leading MVP right now through three games, in my opinion, although he's fighting with Jason Tatum, who's also having an amazing start to the season. But um, that's what it looks like through three games. About 70, what, nine more to go. Way too early to talk about any of that. But at the end of the day, we are extremely excited about the start that Anthony's having. And, um, you know, we're glad he's here, man. What can I say? He's, he's great. Uh, and, and we're happy that our champs are looking like champs again that's really what it is Braun, of course came out and it was amazing in the last one kind of started off slow for his standards but still wanted to show us that he could still take over and i don't think anybody's surprised to see that they shouldn't be but um you know Braun has a lot left in the tank and and we need to definitely continue to utilize him and respect him and get him the damn ball where we <laughs> literally and um that's what comes to mind, man. Oh, I also wanted to comment on something else. I guess the Sacramento Kings announcers were complaining about the confetti flying from the from the rafters and us and celebrating like we won a game seven. I think context is most important for them to understand. First of all, we haven't beat your Sacramento Kings in a long time, which is why you don't know that we rain confetti down from the rafters every single win at home. It's not special for you. You're not special to us. Uh, but it beating you was special given the fact that losing streak. Also, you literally shine a beam into the sky that people can see from space after every win. It's really rich hearing that from the Sacramento Kings announcers that they're unhappy about some freaking paper flying from the, from the rafters. And not to mention that LeBron James had had a phenomenal fourth quarter, 44-point fourth quarter for our team. Uh, it was a tough, hard-fought game. We should be excited to have won a game like that. We started 3-0. and We hadn't done that in, what, since 2010. So I think the Sacramento Kings announcers are a bit 
in their feelings a little too much and a bit a little self-centered and lacking self-awareness in regards to who they are, what they're complaining about, and ultimately why we're celebrating. It isn't just because we beat you. It's because of how we beat you, how long it's been since we beat you, and then most importantly, our own goals and what we're trying to accomplish within ourselves. This ain't about you, Sacramento. Nothing's about you. So that's pretty much what I got to say to the Sacramento Kings announcers. Your Los Angeles Lakers will be wearing uh, their black uniforms tonight. Uh, black and purple, purple uniforms, I guess, on the road. The, the ones that I always complain about, not the black ones, the purple ones. And uh, the, the Suns will be wearing their home rights, traditional home whites, on their home floor. I'm very glad they got rid of their uh, uh, alternate floor that they had last year, which I thought was hideous, some type of greenish. I don't know what, I think they were paying homage to the natives. Love the natives, but I hate them colors. So that's what I wanted to say. Uh, yeah. That's what we're going to be seeing tonight, man. Got to pay close attention to a team that has extra motivation to beat us. They're tired of beating us just like or losing to us, just like we're tired of losing the sack, just like we're tired of losing the Denver. We've turned into their Denver and their sack, so we need to know that coming into their building and stay attacking them. We have the middle edge. We have been whooping their tail. They don't match up particularly well against us. We can attack them in some areas that they're prone to ultimately get beat in and so that's what i was trying to express the start of the video with them offensive rebounds that they ultimately gave up to the dallas mavericks so that's pretty much my thought man i'm ready for this game there's still more to talk about if there's you know if, if some more things come to mind of course i'll make more content but i got breakfast to eat and i would want y'all to know how intense i am about continuing to get this winning streak extended we deserve a 5-0 or 4-0 winning streak and this team is probably the most important one to defeat on this road trip well at least until the end when we see the memphis grizzlies who i also think is very serious the eastern conference teams if we take care of business i suspect we'll destroy them philadelphia is the caveat because you don't know how soon joel will be coming back and 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 we really do struggle against him i think he's day-to-day -day as of right now so i'd imagine he'll come back in the laker game Paul George, I'm not sure how close he is, but if he can come back against the Lakers, he'd probably come back against the Lakers too. So we know how these players do. That's just to be expected. But, you know, we, we should be able to have a winning record on this road trip if we come out with the same intensity, barring any injuries. If we come out with the same attention to detail, I expect for a positive road trip. I don't know if we'll go perfect, but the way we've been playing, we found ways to win. So that's really what it is. I expect we're going to get a hard punch from the Phoenix Suns tonight, though, on their home floor. And uh, if we do what we're supposed to do, I like our chances. BDL 44, I thank you all for watching. Wow.